13 Week Theater is supported by Patreon. Subscribers get exclusive early access and by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you. By the spring of 1976, Gary Marshall was riding high. He had taken an episode he'd written for Love American Style and spun it off into Happy Days. Then he spun off two recurring characters from that show into Laverne and Shirley. And now he was ready to create his next big hit. To help him create the show, he went to writer and producer Bob Brunner, a longtime friend who had helped him develop Happy Days. Most notably, Brunner essentially created the character of Fonzie, including the character's catchphrases. Hey! And sit on it! Rounding out the creative team behind the show was Arthur Silver, one of the writing staff from Laverne and Shirley. And just to make sure that the show would be in good hands, Marshall tapped the production team of Miller and Milkis, the team he'd used for both Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley. The show they all came up with would be set in the glitzy nightlife of a Las Vegas hotel, telling the story of beautiful showgirls performing on stage every night and the lives they led when the sun came up. It was called Blansky's Beauties. And as the show's lead, the girl's manager and den mother, they went for a familiar face. Oh, you do that every time you take Helen out for a snack? You're so beautiful, Rosie, you make me nervous. Nancy Walker had started out in show business in 1937 and had become a reliable star of radio, stage, and screen. Most recently, she had been appearing as Ida Morgenstern on The Mary Tyler Moore Show and Rhoda, and at the same time, she was playing Mildred the Housekeeper on McMillan and Wife, shuttling back and forth between the two coasts to record whatever show she was on that week. And during that same period, she even starred in her own sitcom created by Norman Lear, uh, which is another story. But she was still best known and loved by TV audiences as Rosie, the waitress with a strange fetish for paper towels. Knowing her skills as a comedian and her reputation as the hardest working woman on television at the time, Gary Marshall offered her the lead role of Nancy Blansky. Apparently genetically incapable of turning down work, Walker agreed. Still swooning from Laverne and Shirley's unexpected success, Paramount Television and ABC signed on right away. Lansky's beauties was a go. The rest of the cast was filled with newcomers, with two notable exceptions. Hoping to be able to milk the successes of Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley for all they were worth in making the new show a success, Miller and Milkis decided to tie the three shows together as much as possible. First off, the character of Nancy Blansky was rewritten to be a cousin of Howard Cunningham from Happy Days, and Walker put in an appearance as Blansky attending a party at the Cunninghams, which would appear a week before Blansky's Beauties was to air. Apparently inspired by Walker's ability to appear in two hit shows at the same time, Eddie Mecca, who had been playing Carmine Ragusa on Laverne and Shirley, agreed to take on the role of Blansky's assistant, Joey DeLuca, explaining that he was a distant cousin of Carmine. That leads to a very interesting family tree. Also, Pat Morita, coming off of another story altogether, agreed to reprise his role as the former diner owner, Arnold. And rounding out the cast was a then-unknown 12-year-old actor named Scott Bayo as Joey DeLuca's kid brother, Tony. Lansky's Beauties debuted as a mid-season replacement on February 12th, 1977. I'm Sunshine Aquilino, and I'm a little ditzy. I'm Hillary Prentice, and I'm definitely not ditzy. I'm Arkansas Bates, and I don't even know what ditzy means. I'm Bambi Benton, and I know what everything means. The fame and the fortune, waiting to be won. I want it all. I want it all. A spot in the limelight, and a place in the sun. I want it all. I want it all. And the and the whole. Why? 
Blitz, Glamour, Rhoda's mom. What could possibly go? All right, what happened? Oh, the biggest problem with Blansky's Beauties was the same thing that Gary Marshall hoped would make it a hit. The decision to tie it so close to happy days. You see, Blansky's Beauties wasn't set in the 1950s like happy days. It was set in 1977. Now, if we assume that Nancy Blansky was the same age that Nancy Walker was when the shows were shot, that meant that Blansky would have to be 76 years old, but she still looked like 55-year-old Nancy Walker. Likewise, Arnold would have to be in his 60s, but still looked 40. The disconnect between the character's apparent ages and the time setting confused a few audience members. A Happy Days spinoff 20 years after Happy Days, they just couldn't wrap their brains around it. And worst of all, the pilot episode included Blansky hiring Pinky Tuscadero for her act, wearing the exact same 1950s costume that she wore on Happy Days, and if anything, looking even younger 20 years into the future. Time frame got even more muddled in the eighth episode when, in a desperate effort to give the show a shot in the arm, Penny Marshall guest starred as Laverne. Now, the episode was explained as a flashback to a much younger Blansky, although somehow still looking old, going on a talent hunt in Milwaukee 20 years earlier. But the explanation was one of those blink and you'll miss it types. Second, the time slot. ABC decided to use Blansky's beauties as a replacement for the recently canceled Holmes and Yo-Yo, which put it on 8 p.m. Saturday nights. Not only was the more mature setting of the show out of step with that early time slot and Saturday night a slow night for TV audiences, it also put it up against Hits Emergency on NBC and the last six episodes of The Mary Tyler Moore Show on CBS. The biggest problem, however, was that the show's writing just wasn't up the snuff. When Laverne and Shirley was spun off from Happy Days, it took some of the show's top writers with it, a few of them even pulling double duty between the shows. And by the time Blansky's was in development, that writing staff was being spread way too thin, and most of the prime talent decided to stay with the established hits, not wanting to risk being put on the new, untested show. ABC fulfilled the 13-week commitment to the show airing all the episodes that they had bought before deciding against a second season. The show would last air on June 27th. Oh, hiya, kid. Been a long time. After Blansky's Beauties, Nancy Walker went back to Rhoda and to Pushing Bounty. Eddie Mecca went back to Laverne and Shirley full-time. Pat Morita went back to playing every Japanese man on television, before eventually returning to Happy Days as Arnold late in the show's run. Actually, two actors came out of Blansky's beauties even better off. For Happy Days' next season, Gary Marshall hired Scott Bayo to play Chachi, and Linda Goodfriend, who had played Sunshine on Blansky's beauties, was cast as Richie's girlfriend and eventual wife, Lori Beth. Well, as for the creators, Arthur Selfer went back to Laverne and Shirley. Gary Marshall and Miller Milkis proved that Blansky's failure had been a fluke with Mega Hit and Mork and Mindy, which of course led to, uh, no, never mind. And Bob Brunner? He went back to being a producer on Happy Days and was tasked with writing the next season's premiere episode. Which means, yeah, that one. Which means that he went down in history as the man who gave the English language both sit on it and... Jump the shark. You might 